Fun. That was awesome. They uh, they've all worked really hard on that. I'm just glad we uh, we got to have some fun sharing the thought that it is finished. So this morning we're going to carry that on into a message for you today. We're so thankful that you're here, that you've chosen to come and be a part of Easter with us here at Warhill South. It's an exciting season for us. Uh, this morning we had a sunrise service at 7 o'clock over at the new property and had 41 folks showed up for Easter sunrise service. Amen. Give the Lord praise for that. Amen. That was so exciting uh, to, uh, to be able to gather together in the place that in the, the days to come we'll be uh, slowly moving things that direction as far as the ministries here. We're already moving some things there. Uh, right now we have uh, seven events that we're planning over the next uh, few months going through the summer. We had our first one this morning. We had our sunrise service there. We'll be doing some prayer walks. The youth also had an event there Friday night. Uh, they did a glow-in-the-dark egg hunt, and uh, it was funny. Robin and I were going through the church building over there yesterday, and Robin said, what is that? She's looking down in a vent, and I'm like, uh, I don't know. And So I walk over, and something's glowing red, like, and we're like, what is that? Something's going to blow up in this place. And it was one of those glow-in-the-dark things that you guys had in a balloon, had fallen down in the vent, had gotten kind of tangled up, and it looked like a monster. Was that you, Ryan? Yes. Thanks, buddy. That was fun. So it took us a few minutes to figure out there wasn't a big red glowing monster in the vent system. Uh, but it was, uh, so they had a great time. And one of the most in encouraging things that I heard out of all of what happened there Friday night with the, with the youth um, we put it up on the sign that the youth group was going to have a glow in the dark party there and a young lady out of the neighborhood came and joined up with our youth group that's the hope of all of that man so excited to uh, the opportunity there's 125 houses literally 125 houses around our church building there and uh, the days to come will be uh, the sanctuary there unfortunately is not large enough for us to move into so that's going to, that entire building will become the new children's center, the youth room for the time being while we prepare and we will have artist renderings for you available soon. Uh, but we're going to be building a 300 seat sanctuary right next to the current sanctuary there and connecting it all together. Amen. Come on, give God praise for that. It's, uh, it's an amazing thing. And the Lord has worked it out so just amazing at, at how it all unfolded. Uh, and uh, right now, we own the building next door. We own that property uh, over on Sarah Street. And Lord willing, when all of this is said and done, we're going to move from this property into that facility with the new sanctuary. And we're believing that at this point, we are 100% debt-free on everything. And when we move into that new building, we're believing we're still going to be debt-free when we get there. Amen. 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 So it's, it's incredible what God has done. But it's all because Jesus sends out people that love him, that he puts a desire, a mission in their heart that connects us to why Jesus came. If we're not about Jesus' mission, if we're not doing what he came to do, then why are we doing any of this? It really boils down to do we know why Jesus came. The Bible teaches us that Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. It's all about finding people that don't know him or maybe have fallen away from him and help him to restore them. The Word of God in the New Testament teaches us that he has committed unto us the ministry of reconciliation. It's our job as his believers, as those who trust in him and love him, to help others find their way to him and to help them be reconciled to God through Christ Jesus. So this morning as we discuss this, as we go into the scripture together, we're going to talk about it is finished. I've got a word up on the screen. It's uh, the word that would have sounded something like what Jesus said when he was on the cross. It's the word called tetelestai. Tetelestai. So when Jesus was praying and finishing what God had sent him to do, these are the words he said in John chapter 19. 
And after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst, ever mindful of his purpose, ever mindful of why he came. Jesus was checking off every uh, check mark. He was crossing every T. He was dotting every I. When he was on the cross, he was thinking, what am I here to do? What am I on this cross to do? And he knew that he was there to fulfill the, the prophecies all throughout the Old Testament that had told about who he was and what he would do. Jesus was fulfilling everything that it had been prophesied he would do. And he knew that one of the things that had prophesied was that he would cry out from the cross in thirst. And Jesus said, I thirst to fulfill that prophecy. Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there. They filled a sponge with sour wine and they put it on hyssop and they put it to his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished to tell us that. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we bow our hearts and our thoughts, our lives before you. Jesus, this is the day that you made. A day of resurrection. A day that you carved out by fulfilling the will of your Father. And Lord, we celebrate your resurrection today together as believers. We celebrate the risen Christ. And Lord, as we endeavor to present these thoughts to my brothers and sisters today, we pray for the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon us. God, that you would touch every life, every heart would be changed by the power of your presence. Lord, that not one person would leave here the same. Lord, that we'd all be changed by the power of your presence and the truth of your word. We ask your blessing and your anointing in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. 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 I like having the kids in here. I don't get that many amens ever around here. Thank you. A man named John Stevens wrote these words. He said, I visited a museum in Italy and I was struck by four partially finished sculptures. These were figures that Michelangelo, the artist, originally intended to use on the tomb of Pope Julius. But midway through the project, he decided not to use them, and he ceased work on them. There's a hand protruding out of one block of, of marble and a torso of a man pro proceeding out of another block of marble, and then on another is a leg and part of a head, but none of them are finished. Nearly everyone who sees these works senses the turmoil, the struggle embodied in these figures. It is though they are crying to break free from the prison of the marble to become what they were intended to be. Author Theodore Roeder looked on these four figures that Michelangelo called the captives, and he wrote, when I looked at those partial figures, they stirred up in me a deep longing to be completed and ache to be set free from that which distorts and disguises, imprisons, and inhibits my humanness, my wholeness. But as with those statues, I cannot liberate myself. For that, I need the hand of another. Approximately 700 years before Jesus went to the cross, the prophet Isaiah correctly prophesied that Jesus' appearance on the cross, what it would look like. In Isaiah 52, 14, the prophet wrote with a sense of horror, As many were astonished at thee, his visage so marred more than any other man, and his form more than the sons of men. Isaiah 53, 2, Isaiah says, He has no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Jesus had been put through the horrendous forms of torture and had been atrociously bruised and beaten and battered. And as a result, his face and his whole appearance were marred more than any man's and his form beyond that of any of the sons of men. The NIV says his appearance was so disfigured beyond that of any human being and his form marred beyond even human likeness. Isaiah 53 Isaiah continues to describe Jesus' sacrifice. 
He says he is acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did not esteem him. We did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. When Jesus died on that cross, he bore our griefs. He carried our sorrows. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chast- he was chastised for our peace. He was scourged for our healing. As Jesus approached his death, the Bible says that they gave him this vinegar mingled with gall to drink. And some say that this was some sort of a, of a medicinal type of drink that they would give folks that were dying on the crosses as a way to numb them, as kind of an anesthetic to give them a little bit of help while they were hanging on the cross. And Jesus, as he had touched it to his lips, he lifted up his voice and he said, To tell us die. To tell us die. It is finished. It is finished. What had Jesus finished as he hung on that cross? What were the things that were on his mind that Jesus was thinking about as he said those words? First, this was Jesus' exclamation that he had finished the work that the Father had sent him to do. Out of all the things that Jesus wanted to accomplish and knew he needed to accomplish in those hours, Jesus wanted to obey and to please the Father. He wanted to fulfill everything that God had sent him to do. It was on his mind that everything that had been ordained since before the foundation of the world was laid, when the Word tells us that before the foundation of the world was laid, Christ was crucified. This This wasn't an afterthought. This wasn't a way to fix things. This was the plan since it all began. Jesus had a destination. Jesus had a purpose and God had a plan. His son Jesus was going to go to the cross of Calvary and he was going to die for mankind. The blood of Jesus from the very moment he was conceived in Mary's womb already contained the virtuous power that would bring health and healing and salvation to mankind. With every breath that flowed in his body That blood that coursed through his veins had a destination. It had a purpose. It had a place that it was one day going to land. And as it spilled out of his body from the cross that day, that blood had a place. It was looking for your sin. It was looking for a place to answer that it could say, It is finished. God, I've done exactly what you've requested. The mission is now completed. Out of all the grades that you can get in school, out of all the things, A's were good, I didn't see a lot of them. I lived in B.C. world. (laughs) Occasionally uh, an F, anybody, do they even still give F's nowadays? I I didn't know in this P.C. world if that's even allowed anymore. Um... (laughs) The worst grade you can get is an incomplete. Out of all the grades that you can get, A, B, C, D, F, it's better to get an F than to get an incomplete. Out of all the grades that you can, be, that you can get, the, the one that says that you didn't even try, that you made no effort at all, is the one that says incomplete. The one that says that you didn't even attempt You you didn't even get a grade. You got an incomplete. I feel like in my life, I've spent so many years of my life and so many days just living incomplete. Living a life where I didn't put enough effort in, where I didn't understand the destiny, the plan that God had for me. And I walked in my own thoughts, my own desires, my own will, and I kept missing out what God had planned for me because I just kept failing to complete anything. So many live their lives not completing anything. They'll start one thing and then they'll start another thing and then they'll they'll stop doing that and they'll they'll go on to the next thing. And we live our lives getting incomplete, incomplete, incomplete. 
And even in those days when we would think that we're going to try to better ourselves, and maybe we even start completing some things in this life and maybe uh, you didn't graduate high school but you went ahead later on and you went and got, got a, a degree somehow and then maybe you made your way into some sort of college and you got some more education and you worked your way up out of the things that had been incomplete in your life. Maybe your childhood felt incomplete because your parents had failed so horribly and you finally found a place in your life where you finally started getting back up on your feet and you, just, you made up your mind I'm not going to treat my kids the way that my mom and dad treated me maybe in all of our efforts to better ourselves we got better maybe in all of our, our willpower to, to make ourselves better people we found a way to make ourselves better people so that we could complete some things in our life but there remains one thing that regardless of where you began or where you're at now or where you'll go in this life there's one thing that you'll never be able to complete on your own own. There's one test that you'll never be able to pass. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. And it doesn't matter how good you think you get or how much you make yourself better as a person. You'll never be able to cleanse yourself of the sin condition that plagues mankind. We all need a Savior. We all needed a Jesus that would go to a cross and declare it is complete. The second thing that Jesus fulfills as he says it is finished, it was the equivalent of the Hebrew word that would be spoken when they would sacrifice a lamb, when they would make the yearly sacrifice that would temporarily pardon men and give them righteousness with God that would last for just a season. The Hebrew priest would stand up, they would declare, they would take the blood of the Lamb, they'd take it into the Holy of Holies, they would ask God to bless that, that blood, they would bring it out and they would take hyssop branches and, and come out over the people and as they sprinkled them with the blood of the Lamb, they would declare, it is finished. That blood of those lambs could only temporarily satisfy God. But the day would come when the Lamb of God Himself would go to Calvary's cross. And when Jesus himself, the high priest of our souls, it was an unnatural worldly priest that carried that blood into the throne room of God that day. It was his own son, his only begotten son, carrying the blood that he shed that brought it before his father and said, Father, is, will this take care of the debt of sin in mankind? And the father said, that will take care of it, not temporarily, but that will take care of it forever and ever and ever. And whoever will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved because of the blood of the Lamb. I should have marked this better. In a secular sense, the word... To tell us die. It's also used in business. It was used in those days in, the, in a business sense. And in the world to signify that a debt has been paid in full. And some folks might think that what Jesus did when he went to the cross was he was paying a debt for himself. But the fact is Jesus owed no debt. He paid a debt he did not owe. And I owed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. So now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. Christ Jesus paid a debt that I could never pay. He took our place. He paid the debt of sin that we owed. And when we by faith repent and receive Him as Lord, we are set free. And this is why Paul, Rome and who, why Paul wrote, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. When Jesus uttered these words, it is finished, it was his declaration that the debt was fully, completely satisfied, fulfilled. His blood had utterly and completely cleansed us forever.
Let's never forget today that Jesus was willing to offer His own blood for the payment of our sin. Not for any wrong that He had done, but I thank God that He stamped my debt. He's marked it paid in full. When we stand before God, it's not going to be our righteousness that we declare. It's not going to be our goodness that we declare. We're not going to be able to get to the throne of God and talk about how good we are or how great we are or how many things we've done. If you want to please the Father in that moment, you'll declare this. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. If you're asked today, why should you be allowed to go to heaven? Would you try to tell God how great you are, how wonderful you are of all the good works you've done? It won't get you far. But when we stand before God, what's going to answer Him and what's going to give us access to eternity with God forever will be when we can say this, I've received the blood of Jesus for the sacrifice of my sin and I'm trusting Him completely and in nothing else will I trust. This morning, if we're consumed with grief, let's remember that Jesus bore our grief. If we're overwhelmed with sorrow, let's remember that He carried our sorrow. If you're trapped in a life of transgression, remember that He was wounded for your transgressions. If you're living in sin, you can be forgiveness because He was bruised for your iniquities. If you're tormented and have no peace, remember that He was chastised for your peace. If, you're, if you have physical or mental illness, remember that He was wounded for your healing. Jesus paid the price for your salvation, for your liberation, for your physical healing, and for your complete restoration. Would you close your eyes with me for just a moment? I want to ask you to think of this. Would you think of the price that Jesus paid? What His death has accomplished for you? Doesn't it make you want to stop for a few moments and to thank Him for what He's done for you? Where would you be today if Jesus hadn't died on that cross? Would you just take a moment and just begin to give Him thanks from your heart, from your spirit. Just let gratitude rise up within you this Easter morning. Oh, how He loved you. Oh, how He loved me. Oh, how He has given His life for us. Are you thankful this morning for what Jesus has done? If you're here this morning and you've not given your life to Christ, this is how you do it. First, you have to admit that you're a sinner and that you need forgiveness. Second, we must believe that Jesus Christ died for us on the cross and that He rose from the grave. And through prayer, confess that Jesus Christ is the only way to God and commit to live for Him for the rest of your life. If you're here this morning and God's speaking to your heart and you know that it's time to make a change. You've done things your way and you keep getting incomplete. 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 You're trying to be a good husband, but you keep coming up incomplete. You're trying to be a good parent, but it keeps coming up incomplete. It seems like everything in your life, every way you turn, it just keeps coming up incomplete. Jesus wants to declare over you today an end to your struggle, an end of your sorrow, an end of your grief, an end of the condition of sin in your life, an end to an eternity destined for hell and the beginning, a turning point 
a time when your life was going one way and now it's turned and going another with a destiny called heaven and eternity with God. Is the Lord speaking to your heart this morning? Are you ready to say today's the day I'm giving my life to Jesus? I want today to be the day that it is finished. If that's you, would you slip your hand up Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for those hands, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for saving people in this house today. Thank you, Jesus. That's how we know we're on the right path. That's how we know we're on the mission of Jesus. When souls are being saved, no other religious exercise can identify us as people that are doing what God's called us to do other than lives being changed by the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Maybe you're here this morning and you just want to recommit your life. Maybe you've kind of grown cold in your walk and you just want to reconfirm your love for Jesus and that you want to get back on fire for God. Maybe you've gone your own way for a while. Maybe you've been like a prodigal. And you've gone your own way and done your own thing. But you're hearing the Father call you today and you're ready to return back to your first love. Would you lift your hand and say, I'm coming home today. Thank you for that hand, brother. I'm coming back to Jesus. I'm coming back to Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's stand together. If you would, reach over and take someone by the hand near you. Hallelujah, Lord, we love being the body of Christ. Let's all just reaffirm our faith and our love for Jesus as we repeat this prayer this morning and just recommit our lives to Him fresh and new today or maybe for the very first time today. Let's pray. Just follow after me. Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. And I need your forgiveness. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. And you rose from the grave to give me life. I know you are the only way to God. So now I want to quit disobeying you and start living for you. Please forgive me wash away my sins change my life and show me how to know you in Jesus name from this moment forward I'm a child of God Jesus is my Lord and heaven is my home in Jesus name I pray amen amen we'll give him a shout of praise Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, we are going to uh, let everybody get ready to head out to the field across from us here. We've got an Easter egg celebration prepared for all the little egg hunters. And uh, in case you're here and don't know, when your kid comes back to you with a basket full of eggs that are completely empty, it's, uh, it's not because we're mean. Which is kind of funny. It's but April it's, Fool's Day. Um, but the, we put empty eggs out there for them to find. They bring them back. They turn those eggs back in so we can use them again next year because we're frugal. And um, then we, every kid gets the same bag of candy. We've got plenty of them prepared for them. So um, everybody enjoy that time and hang out together. All right. Yeah, so if you didn't come prepared to egg hunt, we do have bags for them. All right, time for Deacon. Everybody say hi to this guy. We, he, he, he's brand new. I didn't know all that good looking was under there, man. <laughs> he, uh, 
a lot of the people that we've been going to church with for the past five years have never, ever seen me with a clean face. It's either been a goatee or a full beard. So I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Sean. For those of you that don't know me or recognize me, um, real quick, I wanted to share this with you, then I'll get through announcements so those kids can go out there running. Um, I woke up this morning at 4.30, wide awake, sitting up straight in bed. Um, I hear Steve say before, when that happens, you better listen and or both, and, and or reach for your Bible or both. So I did both, and this is what was put in my head, and I looked it up and read it. First uh, Peter 4, 8. Most importantly of all, continue to show deep love for each other, for love covers a multitude of sins. I don't know what that means to me. Well, I know what that means to me. I don't know what it means to y'all, but it was meant to be shared. So take that little nugget with you, pray on it, apply it to whatever's going on in your world, and um, his words don't come back void. End of story. That's easy there. All right. Um, no midweek service this week. Everybody enjoy time with your family. Enjoy spring break, a little relaxation, and we'll get back at it the week after next. Um, I got a note here that the intercessory prayer worship is not Saturday, April 15th. It's Saturday, April 14th. They're off a day. So same time, same bat station, all that good stuff. Um, for those of you that remember hearing that, I heard Chop laugh. He, heard, he knows what I'm talking about. Um, all right. In here, man, I'm shaking. Every time I get a verse like that and I share it, I shake like a leaf up here, even though I do this every week. Ooh, just gets me going. Um, there is a couples conference coming up, uh, sponsored by the radio station. If you're interested in that, go to the radio station website and check it out. Um, bum, 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 bum. Run for Hunger, May 5th um, at 6 o'clock. If you're interested in that, get with Robin. Um, Costa Rica mission trip, if you're interested in that, go to uh, the Warhill website or email Michael. His email is in here. Um, Warhill text giving, Robin mentioned that. And um, Celebrate Recovery. Kim, is that going on tonight or no? Okay, no Celebrate Recovery tonight. But if you're interested in being involved in that program in any way you see or feel that you're led to do so, see that lady right there and she'll hook you up. And if you want War Hill gear, see Curtis and Mindy back there. They've got War Hill gear from cups to hats to shirts. Um, you name it. Um, it's all pretty cool stuff. So um, I think there's an egg hunt, isn't there? I bet. Is there some kids that want to go get some eggs? Yes. Chop. Chop your... No, chop. All right. Okay. The way we've done this in the past, and I think the way we're going to do it now, kids, you cannot cross that road by yourself. You can go right out on the sidewalk and wait to be escorted across the street to chase your eggs around. You will be given instructions when you get out there. So, parents... You can guide your kids out there, but don't let them go across the street until they're all together. Okay, Courtney and Robin are out there, so they will... Uh, 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 that doesn't mean run. Go figure, it's mine, right? <laughs> all right, let's bow our heads. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done in our lives, Lord. We thank you that you sent your son to die on that cross to cover our sins. We are so thankful that he rose on the third day, Lord. He lives within us all. And I pray as we go out this week, this month, this year, that we can share that love with others so that they can know the feeling of having the living Savior inside of them, Lord. We pray for those that couldn't be here today, Lord. We pray for those that are among us that are sick and need your healing, Lord. Touch them all. Touch them all in only the way that you can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Orderly, children, orderly.